If it's one thing all coach owners can agree on, it's the importance of motorhome safety, right? We all endeavor for a safe excursion each time we take our unit out on the road. All motorhomes are equipped with specialty safety related components such as fire extinguishers, carbon monoxide alarms, propane leak detectors, and smoke alarms. But did you realize electronic safety devices have a limited service life that their readiness and efficiency can deteriorate over time. In this episode, we'll take a closer look at the common safety devices found on every motorhome and what we can do to ensure our safety and the safety of the coach. Obviously, the carbon monoxide detector is a very important safety device. CO emissions are odorless, colorless, and tasteless. Sadly, many people succumb to carbon monoxide poisoning every camping season. All coach builders install at least one, but it's strongly recommended to have a CO alarm positioned near every sleeping area in the coach, especially if you travel with kids. Here's one produced by MTI Industries from their safety alert line. Take note that it is UL listed. The listing agency stamp proves it surpasses the minimum requirements of RVIA and NFPA the National Fire Protection Association, for use in any RV. RV standards differ from industrial or commercial standards. And that's important. Avoid using any sensing device that's not listed specifically for RVs. Some retail residential alarms may not stand up to the rigors of life aboard a motorhome. This alarm and most all safety devices that sniff the air are designed with sensors that remain effective for about five years. Not that they will immediately be rendered useless after that, but according to the manufacturers, once installed, five years is the approximate useful lifespan of these devices. If your motorhome is older than five years or you're contemplating purchasing a used coach, this is something to remember. The nice thing about safety alert alarms and sensors, they produce an audible and visual signal when the five year mark has been reached. Plus a reminder is clearly stated on the outside cover of their alarms as well. As with all the alarms and sensors featured in this presentation, always read the instructions carefully. They are packed with valuable information regarding their installation, use, and operation. While using the motorhome, it's recommended to test the CO monitor at least once a week. Simply depressing the test mute button, however, only checks the internal electronics and the horn. The only viable method to test the actual sensor is to use a CO test kit. This handy kit is also available from Safety Alert. During the test, the CO monitor is isolated and the test spray is released inside the plastic covering. The bag is then sealed. It may take a few minutes for the alarm to trip, so be sure to follow the directions on the can explicitly. I recommend coach owners perform the audible horn test every week and the actual sensor test using the test spray at least a couple of times each camping season. Also, periodically inspect the motorhome engine and generator exhaust components for leaks. The engine and generator are but two of the possible coach-related sources of carbon monoxide emissions. To be compliant, a generator tailpipe must extend beyond the rear or sidewall of the coach. Never should it terminate below the floor inside of the exterior walls. It's also wise to have the entire undercarriage inspected periodically to be sure no gaps or air leaks exist between the floor structure, sidewalls, and the interior spaces. The propane burning appliances are additional sources of carbon monoxide, which underscores the importance of proper cleaning and servicing of the appliances and testing the pressure regulator at least once each year. Speaking of propane appliances, another crucial safety device is the propane gas alarm. Designed to detect the presence of propane and butane, you'll find yours mounted near the floor of the coach since propane is heavier than air and any accumulation will be more concentrated near the floor. 
Much like the carbon monoxide alarm, it's equipped with a test button, LED indicator lamps, and a sensor. The sensor will typically detect a few types of gases, but it's only tested and approved for propane. Again, I need to point out the listing agency. Remember, it must be approved for RV use. This model only detects the presence of propane near the sensor and emits an audible alarm. But this model also comes packaged with a solenoid valve which mounts down near the propane regulator and literally shuts off the flow of propane whenever the sensor is activated. Nice! Like the CO monitor, it's the wise coach owner who tests the propane alarm often. Depress the test mute button to test the horn portion and the electronics. To test the sensor, it must be subjected to a flammable gas. It's very easy to use a common butane lighter like this one. While not actually producing a flame, simply depress the valve, thereby releasing some butane near the sensor. After a short delay, it should emit about an 85 decibel audible tone and flash the red LED. Some alarms can detect both carbon monoxide and propane combined into one device. This one is produced by Safety Alert, and here's one produced by Atwood. They contain two distinct sensors that operate independently and both will satisfy the RVIA requirement. A question came up in one of my seminars recently concerning those coach owners who might be hearing impaired and unable to hear the audible alarm from these 12 volt safety devices. It's a valid question. One suggestion is to acquire the safety alert combination propane and CO monitor, the one equipped with the solenoid valve, and simply have the solenoid wired in parallel with a 12 volt strobe lamp of some kind that can be mounted inside the coach. There is a third alarm also required in all RVs, the smoke detector. While the other two alarms already mentioned are usually hardwired into the 12 volt DC system, the RV smoke alarm is typically powered by its own onboard 9 volt battery. However, I did find one that uses three AA batteries instead. The nice thing about smoke alarms compared to the others, they usually have a longer service life. Some, like this one, are effective up to 10 years. This one, by safety alert, actually has a label indicating its replace by date. Also make it a habit to replace the battery twice a year. Many suggest replacing the battery at each switch of daylight savings time. Good idea. Remember, pushing the test or reset button on any electronic detector, including the smoke alarm, only tests the internal electronics and the speaker or horn. So to test the effectiveness of the sensor itself, it's necessary to squirt a little artificial smoke into the sensor. There are plenty of spray cans of artificial smoke available, but getting too much spray into the sensor can damage or weaken it. With this one, it only takes a half a second, and with its extension, it releases just enough smoke to test the sensor, but not so much as to contaminate it. Since the carbon monoxide alarm, the propane detector and the combination propane and CO detectors are all hardwired into the 12 volt battery system of the motorhome, none will operate with a depleted battery bank. So be sure to keep that battery system in good working condition. It's recommended to test the audible alarm every week and to test the sensors at least twice a year using the artificial gases mentioned. Avoid using common cleaners, waxes, or furniture polish around these safety devices. Such contamination may harm the sensors or trigger a false alarm. But it's a good maintenance practice to keep the fronts of all the sensors clean and free of dust and dirt. Simply wipe each with a damp cloth periodically or use a soft vacuum attachment to remove the dust particles. I often get emails to the house calls column regarding false indications periodically. A few things can cause false alarms. Silicone adhesives, hairsprays, acidic liquids, even salt spray. Never assume the alarm you hear is a false alarm. Follow all the necessary evacuation procedures to the letter. As mentioned earlier, it's vital that you read and understand how your particular alarms operate. Know the various LED indications and how the test reset buttons operate. All quality RV detectors and alarms will feature a fault mode indication.
usually a series of intermittent beeps and flashing LEDs. Low voltage, faulty internal electronics, sensor contamination can all lead to a fault indication. As mentioned earlier, most will have an end of life signal, meaning it's time to replace that alarm. Contact customer service or a certified RV service technician if you have any questions. So there you have it, a little more insight into how the mandated electronic safety devices operate and how you can perform some simple tests to guarantee their effectiveness. Since the topic of fire extinguishers is so extensive, I'll have to address that in a separate presentation. So stay tuned for that info in an upcoming episode of Motorhome House Calls. Thanks for watching.